Thanks, ASAP, and welcome to Wicked Missoula. I'm your host, the one and only Scott Ramp, and to the right of me was ASAP Adonai. What song was that? That is by the hardest working man in show business, James Brown. It's called Drive Your Funky Soul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect song for a Monday. Oh, thanks, ASAP. Well, we have a great show for you guys today. We have a bunch of clips and a bunch of different videos. Um, I'm going to do events today because uh, Noel has the day off. Um, I'm going to be, um, we're going to be talking about, we have a whole bunch of brand new programmings on tonight. We have community lecture series. We have global public health. We have, um, we have some clips from the wild walk that happened over the weekend for the kickoff of the International Wildlife Film Festival. So we're going to go over a little bit of that about the schedule where you guys can go check out in terms of movies and you can, you know, just get a nice little highlight of what you can expect throughout this week happening at the Roxy Theater. But of course, um, before we start all that, we are getting a great chance to be outdoors and enjoy the early, sp late spring, kind of like maybe quasi summer, because we don't really have a spring in Missoula. It may rain for maybe a month or so, but then it's like usually dry and hot. But it is currently 39 degrees out this morning. Um, it started off a little cold, but of course you can expect it to be a high of 69, maybe even warmer because it can be super clear. And of course it'll start chilling out tonight as well because it is clear. And then Sunday, I mean Tuesday, ugh, it's a high of 72 degrees outside. Wednesday, your high is going to peak up to 78. We might even see um, temperatures uh, in the 80s this week, but who knows? It's it, The weather is always changing and that's what we have to show you um, with weather, but of course you can find out more information uh, about the weather if you go to uh, the National Weather Service gov and, uh, and to find out more information about us, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made your right out tie so you can see you know, I was nice little face right there. You can see videos and more by clicking on these links on our tabs in our website. You can like us on Facebook. We post everything we do and we've uh, shown on our show today and other days of course you can follow us at wake up missoula you can also follow missoula community access television on twitter at mcat tv missoula where we'll be uh, live tweeting hopefully during the um supreme court hearing this friday and of course you can like us on our facebook page and you could also go to our mcat.org for more information and to download and find out more about uh, making your own tv show you can also be part of our stop animation drop-ins for kids aged 9 to 13 and also we have our MK on YouTube and finally um, it's our summer programs all you gotta do is click on this picture on mcat.org and you can download the uh, form for your child and we have it age range from 9 all the way until 18 because we just started a teen workshop group called zombie movie making workshop so that's it's a great resource and kids get a come together and make a movie. But that's about it in terms of MCAT. Let me show you some, some videos because I'm kind of getting tired of talking. So here is a little taste of, this is the kickoff to the International Wildlife Film Festival. Um, and here's the parade that um, kicks it off every year. And this happened, uh, I believe it was last Saturday on the 16th. So there's a little taste of what you guys um, already saw. If you were at the parade, of course, you can find out, you can just watch it on our channel, MCAT, channel 189. Sometime later this week, I'm pretty sure it'll probably run on MCAT in the next couple of days as well. Um, you can also, uh, 
let's see. I have, uh, so as you can see, I'm wearing a shirt. This shirt was given to me from the people at Diversity Day, and it was great. It was great. It happened on, on Saturday about uh, from 6 to 10, and they had a whole bunch of um, uh, little, like, little skits and little things that happened to celebrate diversity here in Missoula. And, of course, uh, we have, I have a little bit of highlights, basically kind of encompassing the best, uh, the thing that really stood out to me personally when I was filming this over the weekend. And without further ado, here is a little taste of uh, Diversity Day, which will probably be running on cat sometime next month, but um, here is a, a little bit of this. I realized right then and there, life is 100% limitless. It's all what we make of it. And it's all what we choose to do with it. And for me, that just means doing things a little bit different than what the majority of people are doing or what I was, how I was doing it before my accident. And it also taught me that, yes, I'm very lucky. I've had an amazing support group around me. I've had amazing opportunities to get on these hand cycles, to get out and do what it is I love to do and continue the lifestyle that I live. People as far as they would go and not as far as they would like them to go. My years in the social activist helped me in my run in 1960 to run for the U.S. House of Representatives. I may be the first time I'm a member of Congress, but I won't be the last. Yeah! I thought things were normal in the way that I, I realized the rest of the world. So there's different levels of normal, and then, but then I started traveling to other reservations and seeing other young people and other young kids dealing with a lot of the same uh, struggles, a lot of the same hardships, and I felt, um, you know, that after I started being more exposed to the different levels of, of struggle and uh, different levels of trauma, different levels of uh, uh, oppression, uh, I started to feel a need to do something about it. All right, so that was a little taste of, of from your diversity um, event as well as, um, but now we're gonna talk a little bit about what's happening um, here in your Missoula area. So of course, if you are, um, a little bit illiterate on Facebook. They have a Facebook um, class at the Lifelong Learning Center starting this morning at 9 a.m. So you can go check it out, just learn about Facebook. This is for the last uh, few survivors of the non-Facebook world. Um, there is ASUM Housing and Community Resource Fair at the University of Montana. Um, they're doing a, um, the, at the atrium, the University Center atrium, so basically the whole entire area, they're doing a housing and community resource fair. You can check that out. Uh, the International Wildlife Youth Matinee screening with uh, SciShow Kids Demo. So, of course, uh, when I was a kid, you know, this is the 39th annual International Wildlife Film Festival. So what they did is, um, when I was a kid, They'd always bust up over, us over to the uh, Roxy or the Walma, depending upon which was hosting the International Wildlife, Wildlife Festival, and we'd watch a movie, and we'd learn about it, and then we'd talk about it when we went back to school. So this is a, a great resource for kids to just bu be bussed there, and they get to watch a nice little documentary. And of course, I do want to show you guys a nice little, um, their nice little website. There's um, wildlifefilms.org, and you can see um, from April 16th to the 23rd, all bunch of movies and all sorts of stuff, but of course I'm going to scroll on down and we're going to watch the nice little trailer from the International Wildlife Film Festival.
right, so happening at the Roxy pretty much all week, all day, all night. Um, they're going to be showing a whole bunch of um, documentaries uh, featuring wildlife and all sorts of great stuff. And I'm just going to check out the schedule and just kind of briefly kind of go with you on the schedule. And um, there's a uh, what's happening today. It's the Ocean Stories Deep Ocean and Greg Stone. And that's happening at 5 p.m. today. Um, the Pursuit of Hipponess and... Uh, Life Force 2. Ooh, that's happening at uh, 515. That's 108 minutes long. It must be two documentaries. Um, at 7.30 p.m. tonight, it's going to be The Messenger. And then 7.45, it's going to be Jumbo Wild and Polar Bear Summer. Ooh. All right, so let's move back to what's happening on today. Everywhere else, that's not the International Wildlife Film Festival. Um, besides, of course, they have... Uh, I International Wildlife Film Festival registration happening at 11, and that's happening at the Roxy from 11 to 3. And of course, the, um, I'm pretty sure they're looking for volunteers to help out with ushering or help selling tickets and people. So if you want to help out with that, go to the Roxy from 11 to 3 p.m. and do all that stuff. But of course, um, moving back, it's family fun time at Gymismo Gymnastics. I believe that's walking to five years of age. And they can do flips and tricks and cool little things, bounces and foam pits to keep kids safe while at the same time running around like crazy children. Um, the next one is uh, announcement of Peeps Show contest winner. So if you did a Peeps Show, and by Peeps Show, you know there's little um, gooey peeps that um, are sold during Easter. They had a, um, a, a basically an art contest. You make a little, little gazebo thing with a bunch of little peeps and in terms of literary books, and you just kind of show it off. So, you know, you can have Harry Potter and the peeps of fire so a couple peeps are probably like kind of burnt and crispy that's what I what I, well, that's what what that's what I would have done all right so of course um, there's da, 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 there's an open house at the makerspace of the public library so if you don't know what the makerspace is in the public library um, don't worry because they have a lot of stuff going on there but I think the one thing that you should be really interested in is because they have a 3d printer at the makerspace of the public library to get to learn more about that uh, there's a preschool play group at roots echo sports center so it's basically like mismo gymnastics but it's not and they have another trampoline jumble thing that's happening at 11 a.m. and of course it's Moscow Monday at Montgomery distillery and I I believe it's every um, cocktail sold goes to about a portion of that cocktail sold goes to a nonprofit. Um, there's beginning computer fundamentals at the Lifelong Learning Center starting at 1 p.m. Uh, bridge group at the Missoula Senior Center at 1 p.m. There's the kitchen table conversations at St. Pat's uh, Convention Center. So it's just off of Broadway. It's that building. It's like the main area. But anyways, and it's just a conversation where you can just hang out, have coffee, and um, yeah, it's 10 bucks. Uh, that's happening 2 p.m. this afternoon. And of course, Electronics Exploration at the Missoula Public Library is happening at 3 p.m. Wordplay, um, they're doing that at 4 p.m. Um, let's say Giving uh, Bach Night. So it's B-O-C-K -K Night. And it's Missoula Brewing Company. And it's a special event. It's a fundraiser. I do, let me just double check real quick. Uh, nope, it's just a generic fundraiser. <laughs> Must be like another uh, 50 cents to a nonprofit sold for every beer, blah, 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 blah. All right, Raising the Dead, they're, um, at the top hat, they have Raising the Dead. It's uh, It happens every single Monday from like 5 to 8 or 5 to 9. And it's they show live recordings of the Grateful Dead, so you can see Jerry Garcia in the band, or and you also see the band post-Jerry Garcia. Um, that's happening at the Top Hat Lounge. And, of course, if you go to this and Fish... I think it's Fish Thursday. You uh, get like you put you get a punch card, and if you fill out the punch card, you get a free show to see either at the Top Hat, and I think it's at the Wilma, but I'm not entirely sure. It really depends upon the profile, the, how high profile the tickets are. Um, the uh, da da da. And of course, there's new to Medicare workshop. They're doing that at the Gallagher Business Building. So if you're new to Medicare, you're 55 and older, and you want to get on Medicare, it's it's a great resource, and it's at 6 p.m. at the Gallagher, Gallagher Business Building in rooms 222 and 213. I guess it's uh, if it overfills. And then, of course, open mic poetry reading. They're doing this at the uh, Warehouse Mall, and it's, uh, it's at 6 p.m. tonight. Um, there's intro to email at the public library. So if you don't know anything about email, you can go to the public library tonight at 6 p.m. And there's oh, and then here's some of these like the basic events that are happening. There's Open Mic Night, Imagination Brewing Company. There's Service Industry Night happening at ooh at Plonk. 
Sorry about that. Uh, there's Jazzula. Jazzula is a great place uh, for people to just kind of jam and hang out, enjoy some music, and that's at St. Anthony Parish, starting at 6.30, and you pretty much can go all night, because it's not only is uh, the music improv, but probably t the time as well. Um, there's Tom Catmull happening at Red Bird Wine Bar, which is the Florence Hotel. Uh, City Council meeting is happening tonight at 7 p.m., so um, I'm not entirely sure what they're going to talk about, but I'll, uh, I can probably get back to you on that later in the show. And of course, it's Blues Monday at, at the Band Lander, and that pretty much does it for your uh, events happening Monday. And up next, we got ASAF, Musical Notes with ASAF. <laughs> well, let me tell this delightful story first. Pastor Joseph Sissick of, Sac uh, I think it's Sacramento, California. He went to a Sacramento Kings basketball game, and you know during the halftime when they have the people come out and make shots? Well, this pastor made a 47 jump shot, and he winds up winning a 2016 car. He took the car and sold the car and put it into the ministry, and I just think that was a pretty cool thing to do. It was like this really fancy car that he won, and I guess he didn't really need it. So I just thought I'd share a little delightful story. Anyway, getting to today's musical notes with ASAF, it starts off with a conversation between Dr. David Banner and a reporter named Jack McGee. And in the midst of that conversation, Dr. Banner says, Mr. McGee, you don't want to make me angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. You know, because he was being interrogated by this reporter. <laughs> and anyway, um, we are talking about a television show from the past called The Incredible Hulk. We're not talking about the new movie, but the 1978 television series. The Incredible Hulk is an American television series based on the Marvel Comics character, The Hulk. This series aired on CBS, and it starred actor Bill Bixby as Dr. David Banner, and actor Lou Frigno as The Hulk, and Jack Calvin as Jack McGee, the reporter. Now, the synopsis of this show... Dr. Banner wants to tap into what makes humans strong, physically strong, in his laboratory. But he becomes exposed to gamma rays, which alters his body. So whenever he becomes angry, his body does a metamorphosis and it changes from Dr. Banner to the Hulk. So that's kind of the synopsis. The series um, aired from 1978 to 1982 with 82 episodes over five seasons and the original pl uh, pilot was a two-hour plot in 1977 and prior to that so um, let's show that first clip and I'll, I'll narrate while we're doing that in this scene here this man here he he befriends Dr. Banner, but he really is psychotic and has mental illness. So he takes Dr. Banner to this island, and then he tries to kill him with a crossbow. In, in the um, pursuit to kill Dr. Banner, he falls down a ravine. When he tries to climb out the ravine that we saw at the beginning, a scorpion bit him in the hand, and that ticked him off. So that's why he became the Hulk. And now this is the confrontation with the Hulk himself and this man that's schizophrenic. And you see what happens. The Hulk pulls the tree, the whole branch, the trees, the limbs, everything, see? And then the tree falls on this man so that he can get free of him. So isn't that something? That's just kind of a... <laughs> that was part one of the battle. And they end up having a second battle if you watch the whole entire thing. And, of course, he ends up dying and then the Hulk buries him and that's it. But see, everybody thinks the Hulk is a bad guy. He's really a good guy, and he lives a transient kind of a life trying to find a cure to keep him from turning into the Hulk. And, of course, the Hulk has a good side, like this scene with this rabbit here. Yeah. He's kind of like a vagabond. Yeah. And, and the reason for the vagabond is because he's trying to find a cure to keep him from turning into the Hulk, Dr. Banner. So he spends his entire five seasons trying to find it. And then, of course, I do remember that they did a uh, couple of movies. Yeah, they had a couple of yeah, like, movies after that. I remember that, that they did a couple, like, it was like cheesy titles, like yeah. Death of the Hulk <laughs> or um, <laughs> Trial of the Hulk. Uh -huh. It's like the Hulk is in trial, and they're just like, probably the prosecutor's like really be making them mad and just saying all this terrible uh -huh. things to him. And he's, and he's like, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Yeah. Well, you know, all those after Hulks were kind of cheesy, but this television show was, was pretty cool, actually. 
And a re another reason why I like this show is because I saw actor Lou Frigno in real life during his heyday when he was the Hulk. I got to see him, and when he ripped his shirt off like the Hulk, this man had muscles in places I didn't even know they had muscles. And he wasn't wearing the green makeup, so you could see all the chiselness of his form. And the <laughs> women were going, ah! <laughs> they were screaming and carrying on seeing the Hulk in real life. And I remember thinking, man, this guy is huge. Yeah. I mean, you should have seen him in real life. I couldn't even describe it. He was so chiseled. Well, it's crazy. Like, um, you know, like, uh, like being that big, it takes a lot of work, and oh, it's yeah. not, and it's not one of those things that you can't just decide to get big. A lot of times, mm -hmm. I mean, there, I mean, there's some people that I know that you know have been working out, and uh, who's like, and then there's people who are bodybuilders, yeah. who've been working out since they were 12 years old. Well, he Lou Frigno was one of those people. You know, his history. He had a hearing problem as a child. And he was put into the weightlifting mm -hmm. to build his esteem, and of course, in his case, <laughs> my, it worked. <laughs> my favorite memory from The Incredible Hulk was um, Lou Ferrigno was like, "Why doesn't Hulk have um, so many lines?" And then they, they responded, "Was like, well, the Hulk doesn't have a Brooklyn accent." Uh huh. <laughs> That's funny you mentioned that because they didn't want to have the Hulk talking because they didn't think it would be uh, credible to have this monster mm -hmm. talking. In the series, now in the cartoons, I think he talked. Though. Yeah, in the comic book too, they had him talk a lot here yeah. and there. There, there were some iterations of the Hulk where he's just like a giant rage berserk rage monster. Other mm -hmm. times, they were just kind of like where he was just wandering around, and you never see him turn back into Bruce Banner. Or mm -hmm. television was the only w w version where they actually called him David Banner, which has yeah. always confused me because, like, when the Incredible Hulk came out, the movies, and then of course yeah, the Dr. David Avengers Banner, the movie, but the comic is Bruce Banner. Yeah, and but then they, I guess so, they didn't want that confusion with the comic and the television series, so they changed the name. It's so weird. Yeah. But then of course, um, and even in the modern iterations of the Hulk, they also um, put David in his name. It's like Bruce David Banner, yeah, or David yeah. Bruce Banner, and then of course they made his father David Banner as well in the. Uh, Eric Bana mm -hmm. uh, movie, but of course that's that's just Hulk stuff. Yeah, well, for those who have never actually seen this television series, if they put the Incredible Hulk 1978, they can see the entire series. Cool. And I'll end it on that note. Thanks, Asaf. Sure. And that was musical notes with Asaf. Let's continue events. What's happening tomorrow, which is Tuesday, the 19th of April. 2016 and this is what's happening of course they have um, winter walking tours and coffee meets at Sentinel so of course if you're uh, interested in just you know going outside and checking out climbing some mountains and doing some hikings um, they're doing a winter walking tour and coffee meets and they do that at 9 a.m. at a Kearns Aquatic Center they meet there they hang out and they'll be like okay let's go and then they go and some people just kind of like stick around and just hang out whatever um, uh, they must be in the employees uh, then there's uh, more International Wildlife Film Festival. It's the River Walk with a naturalist, and they're doing it at the Roxy Theater. I believe it's um, you meet at the Roxy, and then you go for a river walk. So you have the choice between a river walk or you climb Mount Sentinel with um, the uh, Parks and Rec crew. There's um, introduction into WordPress, so if you're interested in kind of like starting your own website, maybe um, it's it's one of the uh, it's the OG of the websites, which is WordPress. Um, there's uh, matinee screenings for uh, Anne Clark for Coalition. They're doing some stuff at the University of Montana for the International Wildlife Film Festival. You can check that out. Uh, family fun time at the Y starts at 9:30 a.m. Um, tomorrow on Tuesday, um, and it's just you know it's you get to go to the Y. You know you, your family gets to maybe hang out, and it's a great resource for not only the kids but also the parents as well. Um, open hours in Makerspace um, at 10 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Tiny Tales. And they usually do this at the Dragon Rug where they do um, finger plays, um, they tell stories, and of course this is from, I think, I believe it's from basically birth to like uh, 36 months or three years or so, something like that. And uh, um, they need an adult lap is required, um, but that happens at the Dragon Rug at, on the second floor of the Missoula Public Library unless otherwise specified. Um, preschool playgroup at Roots Extra Sports Center. So like I said, um, today at 11, it also happens tomorrow at 11, and it's from walking to five years of age where you get to do flips and foam pits. Um, there's shooting the bull Toastmasters. If you're interested in learning to speak well, you can join the Toastmasters, and they are at the Alps Boardroom at the um, St. Patrick Hospital, and that's starting at uh, noon tomorrow. Mule-tastic Tuesdays at 12 p.m., and there's um, introduction to Lightroom at the Lifelong Learning Center at 1 p.m. There's the uh, Walk with a Doc at 3 p.m. It's conference room at the Missoula YMCA, and that's um, yeah, sports, fitness, education, and health. 
Um, there's a youth adult volunteer orientation at the Missoula Public Library. So if you want your kid to stay out of trouble and be involved with the Missoula Public Library, they're doing that at 3.30 p.m. after school tomorrow. And of course, there's caregiver support group at the Missoula Asian Services. Of course, our friends at the Missoula Asian Services come down here and talk about some of the um, caregiver support. So if you're a caregiver and you want to learn more, or if you just want to be supported and maybe tell some war stories from healthcare, you can go check that out. And that's happening at 4 p.m. at Missoula Asian Services, which is just off of um, uh, Orange Street which basically turns into Stevens, but of course it's Orange Street, it's that big curve and it's that big building where you see a fairly good size bus stop. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can go check that out. There's Frenchtown Lego Branch Club at 4 p.m. There's Yoga Warriors at the Lifelong Learning Center at Red Willow. It's for um, um, veterans um, and um, people with PTSD and veterans with PTSD who would just want to use yoga as a, a stress release and of course for health as well. Um, there's Snow White um, Cupcakes Workshop at Taste Buds Kitchen, um, and that's starting at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, there's Falf in the Parks. So Falf, it's warming up outside, guys, so it's time for some Falf at the Blue Mountains and other places around Missoula um, County. And then, of course, they're doing that at the uh, Ben Hughes Park, and that's starting at 5 p.m. tomorrow. And there's a free lecture introduction to self-hypnotist. Help, sip, hypnotism. And of course, that happens at the Missoula Public Library at 6 p.m. And then, because you're making the most of your smartphone at 6 p.m. at the Life Art and Learning Center, uh, Missoula Art Museum is doing a uh, reception tomorrow at 6 p.m. for uh, Ginny DeWeiss, uh, Montana. Uh, Modernist reception is also happening there um, at the Missoula Art Museum. It's class. Uh, there's Pick and Circle at the top hat. So, if you're a bluegrass player and you like to do. Um, some bluegrass, but you don't really have a band. You can hang out with other bluegrass players that don't have a band and play some music as a band. And of course, uh, there's Irish traditional Irish music at the Imagination Brewing Company or with the Crashers and Friends. So Friends might be you. Um, Captain John Mullen Leadership Team meeting. So learn about John Mullen. And that's happening at 6.30 p.m. at the uh, Glenera Place Apartments. System check of the Public Library is at 6.30 p.m. is for, um, I think it's young teens get to go and play video games and stuff. Uh, roll up your sleeves, hands on um, kimchi at the Good Food Store. Uh, so you get to learn how to make kimchi at 6.30 p.m. at the Good Food Store tomorrow. Um, community game night at the Missoula Public Library. Um, 6.30, um, ULA, it's like, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's movement and dance happening at the uh, the Barn Movement Studio at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Um, let's see, African Dance Class at the Missoula Senior Center at 7 p.m. and um, Missoula Symphony Cabaret Concert Number no. 3, uh, Catherine Chi, and that's at the Top Hat at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night. And then, of course, you have all the adult TNT at Mismo Gymnastics and Roots at the Sports Center for adults who want to do flips and stuff in the foam pits without running into small children. Um, there's the uh, Missoula Missoula so Showcase at the Badlander, so it's open mic and it's the best of the open mic happening at the Badlander at 9 p.m. And of course, uh, also on Tuesday, it's the International Wildlife Film Festival After Party. So if you want to get involved with that, that's the last event that's happening at 9 p.m. tomorrow. And of course, all these events you can find at MissoulaEvents.net. But and when we come back, um, well, here is some of the um, videos you can watch. On, on MCAT for the next two days if you guys don't want to go out and do anything. So without further ado, here is all the new programming happening on MCAT tonight. Halfway through a novel at this time and a little more than a third of a way through another novel that will never be finished and makes everyone sad. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, and I think like Ultimately, uh, books are often sold in pairs, um, and it's uh, like the two-book deal is fairly standard for a, a new writer. The College of Visual and Performing Arts celebrates George Gogas as one of its greats, inducting him into the College of Visual and Performing Arts Hall of Honor on this day, March 5th, 2016. Congratulations, George. Thank you. being uh, the dog that treated the prisoners as human beings because the dog was the only one who could actually have this species consciousness yet. 
and realize those are humans. And usually I wag my tail and I go to, human, to humans. So it's a very complex thing to say you cannot compare uh, animals and um, uh, human beings in those types of situations. The comparison, I think, is offensive. But talking about interrelations, how one can humanize the others, or one can use um, humaneness towards the others is something that has to be done. So and it's during that period of time, they basically transcribed um, and analyzed hours and hours and hours and hours of recorded videotaped interactions between parents and their children. It took them six years to get all this data together. And what they found is that all families, regardless of income, do certain basic sort of directive communication with babies. So, you know, things like, you know, don't do that or, you know, put your toys away, that kind of stuff. Um, but then they noticed that there were some significant differences among the different socioeconomic groups. All right, so that is what's happening new on MCAT for the next two days. But of course, you can find out more information by logging on to our website wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You could um, follow MCAT on Twitter at wake up at MCAT TV Missoula. You can also like us on our Facebook page. And also, uh, if you want to find out more information about our summer camps and our other um, young youth programs, you can go to MCAT.org. But of course, I want to thank um, ASAP for joining me this morning. Otherwise, I'd be alone all by myself. <laughs> and um, I want to thank you all for joining me this morning, um, y'all. And that means you all. Crazy. Um, and for uh, Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. And I am ASAP Adonai. Take it away, ASAP.